My name is Andreas Vollmer, Andreas Vollmer in American. I'm from Germany, moved here uh, in 2013, so I've been here in Florida now for seven years. Apart from my day job, I work for a, a software company. I, well, I used to be a cyclist, um, a serious um, roadie. <laughs> I'm a photographer also, an amateur photographer doing portrait and concert and, um, and wildlife in Florida. And well, um, I'm a father of two kids, so that takes a lot of time too. because I moved to Florida and I was on a mission. I needed to have another string quartet. I had one in Germany. Um, and string quartet is just the, the form of music that I cherish the most. Uh, it's in between being a soloist, where everything is upon you and you can do whatever you want, and being an orchestra player where somebody else tells you what you have to do and you have to really be in line with everybody else. So in, in the string quartet, as in any chamber ensemble really, you, everybody is, an, is a soloist, but as at the same time needs to develop the music, needs to develop phrasing, and that's everything with, with, with their peers, which is, a, which is an arti artistic process that um, I, I, really, I really cherish. <laughs> The second violin is, is a little bit in the shadow of the first violin, obviously. The first violin is the big soloist, right? It has the most solos and the most t difficult technical parts, even though oftentimes the second violin is as technically difficult, but it doesn't shine as much as the first violin because it's a, an octave lower. Um, but more, more importantly, I think, you're one of the middle, uh, middle instruments, middle voices, together with the viola, which links together the sound. Um, it really links together the entire quartet, so it's a... It's different from the two edge roles, first violin and cello, that are most kind of soloist. Uh, you, you really pull together the sound from the, from the inside. The program. So we are playing, I think, eight or nine pieces from a uh, composers from here, from around here, so I know many of them personally, which is, which is awesome. Um, it's uh, going to be a very eclectic program with, um, with some songs or some, some pieces um, that are just utterly beautiful to listen to and others that will be more challenging to listen to and are more kind of avant-garde, kind of what you would expect. Um, it's, it's a wide range, really. And um, I just love playing contemporary music and I hope this is gonna, gonna come across, seeing uh, these works, uh, often many of them being played for the first time, seeing uh, the, the thoughts and uh, music from, from contemporaries uh, emerge in front of the audience. It's, uh, this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I did also do contemporary music in, uh, in, in Europe, and it's not a hard and fast rule, but in general, European composers tend to be more cerebral often and more theoretical, and ha less so have the, have the audience really in mind, whereas the, uh, the, most of the composers that I met here in the music is, is both, it's, it's, it's both intellectual often, but more so uh, also with the audience in mind, most of the, the effect, the emotional effect also on the audience. So it's more music in the traditional sense in terms of entertaining, thought-provoking, but really resonating with the audience. Well, come for the number one, because there have been so little opportunities to go to see live music in the last year, as we all know, right? So this is one of the first opportunities, again, to see something that is actually pretty exciting, contemporary music from uh, composers that you can probably also meet some of them in the, in the, um, at the concert. 
It's going to be at the Pew Theater, January 23rd. We have two shows, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. And it's just going to be awesome, so come. <laughs>